three league matches, but there was huge support inside a near capacity stadium arrival this afternoon. Tremendous atmosphere, conditions absolutely ideal for football. Team news for Rangers, Jim Stewart and Robert Fritz are out as expected to injury. David Cooper's on the bench, replaced by Dave Mitchell, but Sandy Clark and Craig Patterson are fit and they're in their usual places. Jimmy Nicholl too, he plays his second match for Rangers and despite his vast experience with Northern Ireland in the World Cup and with Manchester United, I'm sure this is an experience he'll never forget. The Celtic team, uh, Brian Whittaker back at left back in place of Graham Sinclair. But the big loss for them is the absence of Roy Aiken, who's out through suspension. That means the return to central defence alongside Tom McAdam for Willie McStay. Celtic, of course, in buoyant mood after two five-goal performances in the last week. And scoring Lisbon on Wednesday night and against Hibs last Saturday. There's Dave McKinnon. Whittaker flashing with Sandy Clark. Lefty allowing play to go on, Clark's on the deck. Advantage has been allowed, this is Nickel. You see there, Clark still on the ground. Cleared up by McAdam. And McKinnon lets it run to allow Clark some treatment. The referee attending to Sandy Clark is George Smith from Edinburgh. There's the clash initially between Clark and Whitaker. The second tackle by Whitaker was a bad one. Clark, of course, just back from injury. He's had a tough time this season. Came back into the side in Portugal on Wednesday night. Rangers will undoubtedly be worried about him. So Clark resumes, limping a little. There's Mitchell. Tiger from Barnes. Resulting moments in Old Firm match, very tense indeed. Clark now appears to have recovered. McKinnon's cross, Mitchell couldn't reach it. And a free kick's been given in any event inside the Celtic box. That's done by Paul McStay. The player crowded out, that's a bad pass back, there's Frank McGarvey. Peter McCloy rescues Rangers. What a light off that was for Rangers. A player coming through, there seemed to be very little danger. Craig Patterson's pass back, he didn't spot Frank McGarvey, and that was a great opportunity for the Celtic striker, foiled by McCloy. That'll do Peter McCloy a lot of good in the Rangers' goal, boosting his confidence. Foul by Whitaker. Sandy Clark, taking on Whitaker, good positioning by Willie McStay. Covering well for Celtic, but it's a Rangers throw. The target is Sandy Clark, McAdam concedes the corner kick. So once again, Craig Patterson and John McClelland move forward from the back. Harry McCoy is waiting for their arrival, take the corner kick. And from McPherson, that just needed a touch from Sandy Clark. McPherson's header coming straight through to Bonner. Good deep corner kick this from McCoy, right across the face of the goal. McPherson using his commanding height, a good leap down one header. And you see there that a touch from Clark would surely have given Rangers the lead. McLeod getting a second chance. It's beyond McKinnon. Well, if Coven could have controlled that on the run, there would have been an opting on. Coven's in trouble, but here's Barnes. Oh my God, you see Coven still on the ground. Seems to be in a lot of trouble. And the free kick given against Jimmy Nicol. McGarvey joining Davy Coven on the deck. Coven looks the worst, worst affected. Here's Coven with McKinnon. Trying to get back to the ball, Proven. Caught from the back by McKinnon. So Proven limping towards the touchline. I think he may have to go off for further treatment. Both the Celtic subs are out in the track warming up. 
and the match will continue with the Celtic Reaker. Now playing it through behind the goal kick. So now it looks as though David Proven will take no further part in the match. There's Jim Melrose. So bad break for Celtic early in the match. Losing David Proven. Replacement. Experienced figure of Jim Melrose. Billy Gary Clark both missing it. Freak it given for the push by McAdam and Mitchell. This is promising for Rangers. Well, they don't have David Cooper on the field. He's certainly their specialist in this sort of situation. Redford is placing the ball. Bonner lining up his wall. The three men in the wall. Ali McCoy just on the end. Nicholl is beside Ian Redford over the ball. Pat Bonner now appears to be happier. Sandy Clark joining the wall. Well, the referee Smith now insisting that the wall is 10 yards back and that Clark does not interfere unfairly. Got a deflection, that's great goalkeeping from Bonner. Ian Redford coming very close indeed. There's the wall lined up for Redford. He took it with the left. Clark peeling off. Got a deflection off Bonner McLeod and that's fitted into an even better save from Pat Bonner. Living stage, there's Brother Paul. Good pass inside. Here's McLeod with some room. Nichols sold himself rather, or Dawson rather. That's where they go. And McLellan's clearance. Here's Mitchell with a bit of room to work. Living Day coming to meet him. Just Clark up for the moment. Redford appearing on the far side. And that was a problem for Mitchell. He had no support inside. Dawson's header. McPherson. McPherson's away from McStay, a great chance for Rangers. And the cross missed out Sandy Clark. Pull up for David McPherson. Clark finding McCoyst. Mitchell couldn't control it. McLeod setting it up for Tommy Barnes. Tackling back from McCoy, but McGarvey collects it. This time the effective tackle was from Jimmy Nickel, but that time it's a free kick. Obstruction in the part of Nickel. The Barnes has very few chances to shine this afternoon. Jimmy Nickel has been his marker throughout the entire first half. And Barnes, who was so effective on Wednesday night against Sporting Lisbon, finding it very tough to make room to develop his creative play today. Good running from McKinnon. Oh, and Whitaker and McKinnon put a tempo between the two players there. Whitaker will be in trouble. McKinnon too, perhaps. Well, Brian Whitaker doesn't think a lot of McKinnon's sense. Well, we see this again, Whittaker playing it back, the incident seemed to be all over, then a bit of a wrestling match with McKinnon resulting in that retaliatory kick from Brian Whittaker. So McKinnon is booked. And Brian Whittaker, it depends a lot on the interpretation of referee Smith, the treatment he has for Whittaker. Certainly violent conduct, the ball was way out of distance. McGrain coming in to have his toughest worth as the Celtic captain. George Smith is unimpressed. It's taking a long time about this, George Smith, but it was only the yellow card. Why Whittaker's complaining, I really don't know. There's no question that he had an retaliatory kick at McKinnon. And there goes the half-time whistle. Bedlam all around us as the teams depart after a tremendously competitive first half. By no means a classic in terms of pure football. Total commitment. Peter McCloy going off. He had a vital hand in the match early on. So two had Pat Bonner for Celtic. Two great opportunities in the first half. The first after a Craig Patterson error with a pass back. 
putting in Frank McGarvey, and that was an excellent save from Peter McCloy. And then it was Pat Bonner's turn, free kick outside the box taken by Ian Redford, a deflection off Bonner McLeod, an excellent goalkeeping from Bonner, keeping the score sheet blank. That division half time, Rangers nil, Celtic nil. Don't miss the second half. McGarvey losing out this time to McKinnon. Here's Dave Mitchell all on his own, needs some support. Driving in the form of Clark. There's McCoist. Bonner came to meet him. Clark's header, and there's Danny McGrain heading it off the line. Beyond his defence, McCoy is denied by Bonner. Clark's excellent header nodded away by McGrain. The Rangers corner kick. McCoy swinging it in for Redford. There's Sandy Clark. And perhaps the best chance of the match goes a begging. Bonner looking relieved and really might. Corner kick well out. Uh, there's a very good leap here from Redford. Finds Clark on the six-yard box. He had a lot of space, more time than he knew, and he forced the ball wide. Well, there's another touch, finding John McClelland. Through it goes to Bonner. that missed opportunity because the impression is growing that the first goal may well be decisive in this match. Stay and McGrain working the ball clear but it's out for a Rangers throw. by McStay, the chance is on for McGarvey, brilliantly struck by Frank McGarvey, nine minutes into the second half, and Celtic after withstanding so much pressure, make the breakthrough, now this is down to some great play for Paul McStay, there's it, flanks that header out for McClellan, the neat pass inside, McGarvey took his time, measured the left foot shot, and beat McCloy at the left hand post. His ninth goal of the season. No one day looks out of puff. But Rangers rocked by that opening goal. He came so close just a moment ago to taking the lead when Sandy Clark shot wide. And now they a goal behind. Next day, the space for McClear. Was his good play from McClear. He's got McGarvey on the outside and McGarvey misjudged the run forward. He's offside. Well, McGarvey, I'm sure, will be most annoyed with himself after that brilliant run from Brian McClear. McGarvey not keeping a good enough eye on the range of defence, going offside. McCoy goes off, Cooper comes on. Rangers adopting a more adventurous lineup now, I think, with Cooper providing the attacking play in the flank for Clark and Mitchell. Mitchell and Clark are waiting in the middle. They're almost sneaked in. That one are almost taken by surprise. McKinnon had the ball way out wide on the right. Felt as though he was trying to cross it to one of the big men in the middle, but it swerved in under the bar and Bonner had to look lively to put it over. There's Danny Cooper. On the let that one go. Mitchell couldn't reach it properly. Patterson sent it back across and behind. Roll out for the big Ranger centre half. McGrain. McGarvey's a ton pass. They're losing it to Dawson. 
Is this right foot? Person recovering well after the fall. Cooper back to McKinnon. Ian Redford. Clark setting it up for Redford. Chance on again for Clark. Still the danger's not over for Celtic as Cooper flights it in again. Bonner came for it. And the clearance from McLaren not decisive enough. Well, the Green's header should surely have ended it all. For the moment, at least, McDay plays it forward. Well, that could so easily have given Rangers an equaliser. Well, they'll build up between Clark and Redford, set up the chance for Redford shot, which Bonner did well to block, even though he couldn't hold it. And then came the melee, which was eventually scrambled away by Sam. Dawson now to Redford. Person playing it forward. Whittaker coming to claim it. That's a free kick, all right. Foiled by Patterson. A bit of desperation creeping in there. So Whittaker appeared to have the ball in possession quite comfortably. Patterson had no chance of playing the ball fairly. Quarter on our left. Can Rangers save the match? I think it's going to take a flash of inspiration, perhaps some individual player to turn the tide back their way because Celtic has certainly grown in stature since he scored. David Cooper, the man perhaps who could provide that spark which could save the game. They are content to walk the ball to corner flag. It's a Rangers throw, though. There's Paul McStay again. Whittaker, Barnes. Celtic very patient now. They have the lead. There's Barnes going all the way. And that's a glorious second goal. Perhaps 
Rangers close the stretch. Far flung corner, kick one and went, but it couldn't reach it. Mitchell headed it back across. Clark was up with a header, and Danny McGrain for the second time in the match heading it off the line. One by Tom McAdam, here's Barnes on the left. Well, that was a bad one. It was Davy Cooper. No need for that, though, from Tommy Barnes. Absolutely no reason at all for Barnes to react that way. And I think both players will be in trouble now. And that's an act of sheer folly, particularly the part of Tommy Barnes. Cooper certainly will be booked for his late tackle. Here's the reason why. Barnes was striding away from him. Cooper with no chance of playing the ball. There's the result. A yellow card for David Cooper. The referee having a word with his linesman, Mr. Ward, from Paisley, and now. will be in trouble. Actually just checking with the linesman that he interpreted the situation correctly. Namely, Tommy Barnes bouncing the ball off the back of David Cooper's head. It's too well I'm playing the situation even more. That's his header. Adam wins it. Danny McGrain. Staying making himself available inside. William stay at the back. The Rangers supporter retaliating to all that chanting at the Celtic end. But it really is still bedlam in Ibrox. There's David Cooper. And once again, the man coming across with the important tackle was Tom McAdam. Not one of Celtic's most fashionable players in terms of praise, but this afternoon, for my money, he's been standing in the heart of the defence. Head flick on, the chance, it's in the net, forced in by Sandy Clark, and Rangers get a late lifeline with three and a half minutes left to play. So the corner kick from Cooper, was touched on here by McClelland, the passes header was blocked on the line, stay it was, but there was Sandy Clark who forced the ball into the net, and what a finish we're in for now. Well, it stayed that.